What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are back with League Racing once again. We've had the announcement of F1 2018 and a uh, bunch of other stuff going on behind the scenes but finally I can get this video out there. This is the Spanish Grand Prix round number 5 of uh, AOR Oceana Season 2. Um, as you can see we're making some changes to the setup and that is because we have a fully wet race for the Spanish Grand Prix unfortunately. Um, took me as a bit of a surprise. Um, I did a lot of dry running practice uh, in the lead up to this. Uh, myself and Ryan, we did a Mercedes only private test session. I uh, did a 50% race and up against him, I was very, very competitive. Set like a 1 minute 20.7 at the end of the Grand Prix and the overall race time was over 10 seconds faster than SRL. And uh, when I saw that it came up on the screen that it was raining for the race, I couldn't believe my luck. But um, yeah, we made some changes to the setup. I've gone with like 5'11 wings. I honestly don't know if that's going to be a good uh, qualifying setup. I know that you should increase the rear wing by quite a lot. I'm not too sure about the front downforce since we already are running with quite a bit of downforce already with my dry setup. I think it was like 4'9, but now I've changed it to 5'11. And you can see we're going fast at the moment, 18.2. Um, if this was going to be an all-out dry qualifying session with dry setups, I feel like we were easily going to be well into the 17 to a pole position today, but 18-2, it's a little bit slower than usual, but um, if we can further move that marker forward, then I think we'll be in for a pretty good starting position for the race, but as you can see there, running through turn 3, I think I ran a little bit wide there, um, got a little bit lazy, ran out too wide, cost myself a bit of time, but overall this should be still hopefully a really good lap. I fueled up the car for two laps, so um, we're not taking tyre wear into consideration, I just wanted to have two cracks at it at the end of the session because I think my banker time of an 18.5 certainly wasn't good enough and I definitely needed to improve so I gave myself a couple more chances at it at the end of the session. Going purple again to the middle sector. Uh, Ryan has just gone purple as well with an 18.1. I wasn't too concerned about what other people were doing. I was just still uh, concentrated on what I was setting out to do. So heading into the final sector of the Grand Prix fourth gear, really attack this final chicane. I actually was a little bit conservative there in all honesty. I didn't want to throw away the lap and uh, maybe cost myself a little bit of time, but oh, through, open the uh, DRS through the final corner and we go P2. Eight thousandths of a second, nine thousandths of a second uh, off Ryan's time in pole position there. So what can I say? So, so, so close between the two teammates. Um, we're running entirely different setups, but we are in the same car, but nothing really to separate us there. Warden is P5, so uh, starting a little bit further down the order, GRC Jared in P4. So the uh, grid order is a little bit jumbled up for this race. Thank you for that one, Jeff. We will make sure not to get involved in any incidents, but here we are for the Spanish Grand Prix, starting on intermediate tyres in heavy rain. Um, this might be one of those races where it just stays like this in intermediate conditions and it just feels really awkward for everyone. But five red lights for the Spanish Grand Prix and we are underway from the front row of the grid. Cutting back to Master Berserk, he gets a lightning start. He's actually taken out his teammate and DRC Jared. Brock does stuff is out of the way as well. And half the field, before we even get to turn one, is involved in that massive, massive crash. Halfway down the straight of the Spanish Grand Prix. Myself and Ryan, we're still line and stone one and two in the Mercedes, but what was that start? What was that start? Ryan has got a little bit taily through turn three. We have a little look up the inside into turn four. But there you go, Warden. Championship challenger out of the Grand Prix. DRC Jared out of the Grand Prix. Brock does stuff and multiple, multiple other people with front wing damage on the first lap. Unbelievable. Here's a replay of the start. Master Berserk got a great start and it's just like Warden and, and, and Jared just moved to the middle of the racetrack. Um, honestly, you can't call that. You, you honestly can't call that. It's just a racing incident. Uh, probably both of them getting a little bit taily with a wheel spin off the start and everything just happened so quickly and they were all out of the race. How, how unlucky. And, and Brock does stuff, slowing it down. He was looking behind him. Um, he stops looking behind and then he sees two or three cars in front of him nothing he can do he's out of the Grand Prix as well Un unbelievable it's it's been a long time since I've seen a start like this and this is the view from the stream unbelievable you can just see cars scattered everywhere 
If that doesn't make AOR top 5 moments, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. But anyway, we're cutting to the end of the first lap. Um, traction out of this final chicane is absolutely horrendous. You, I tried short shifting for the life of me, all Grand Prix, but it was, it was a nightmare trying to um, get the power down through there. I think I got better as the, the Grand Prix went on, but for these first initial few laps, it was absolutely disgusting trying to get the traction down there on the wheel. But yeah, just losing the back end like crazy. I think uh, in some of the medium speed corners, I was losing the back end a little bit, maybe running with too much uh, front wing, and that was making things a little bit more awkward than what it needed to be. But um, I think as we head into the second stint of the race, we're going to actually lower the front wing to, to four and hopefully cure some of the oversteer issues we're having at the moment. But um, initially, the pace between myself and Ryan, uh, Ryan was, uh, I think, a little bit quicker than me today, um, especially in these opening few stints. I got one fast lap of the Grand Prix when I got a really nice exit out of the final chicane, uh, like you can see there, 34.4. But after that, the tire wear started to kick in. My, my car was too oversteery. Didn't look after the rear tires well, and from there, Ryan really started to eke out the gap. So it was uh, a real nightmare to, to manage the, the car on heavy fuel um, with uh, the oversteer that it had, and um, I was really, really struggling with the tire wear, like I was saying. So it was getting to a point where the gap was getting out to like four seconds. It's 3.3 at the moment, um, but as we cut to lap 12, you'll see the tire wear in a second. I think it's like over 50%. And uh, if we want to do a one stop, we have to get the tires to like lap 16, lap 17. And um, from this moment, I was thinking it's a bit of a risk to do that, um, taking the tires another four, five, maybe even six laps. And uh, Ryan is going to get pit preference. We may have to do an extra lap after Ryan. I thought we're not going to win the race if we do the same thing as Ryan. So let's do something different. Let's go for a two stop and uh, see if Ryan's tires completely die out towards the end of the Grand Prix, which I thought they might have. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I've been really unlucky with punctures lately. And so, I, you know, as soon as I get anywhere near 75%, the tires just pop. So I didn't want to risk that, especially with Warden out of the race, Master Berserk with front wing damage, already making like two stops in this race already. Um, so by playing this, I don't know if you want to call it a safe strategy or maybe even an aggressive strategy, but um, on a tire standpoint, it's a safe strategy. I feel like at minimum, we'll still get second place back. So what's the harm in trying it? So um, for the next 20 odd laps, we're going to be on maximum attack, uh, trying to eke out the most out of this car, out of the tyres, and uh, we'll see what happens at the end of the Grand Prix. Ryan does not respond on the next lap, or the lap after for that matter, and we uh, continue to set some uh, fastest laps. So Ryan is committed to this strategy now on the one stop. Um, it's going to be down to him to uh, kind of nurse his tyres to the end of the Grand Prix now. So from a strategy standpoint, this is actually going to be a really uh, fascinating battle between the two of us, but I've got to um, cut my way through some traffic and I've got to be fast enough to chase Ryan down as well mind you so um, The ball is essentially in my court to see um, Just how quickly I can catch Ryan, but now you can see we're encountering a bit of traffic HO hasn't stopped yet. He's on his old intermediate tires and um, Really slowing us up here. I had to be really patient. I knew I was really fast in this Grand Prix Didn't want to throw away another result with you know so many other people having incidents It's a good chance for me to get some points today and it's just so easy to lose your front wing, so I didn't want to do that. So we lost over a second there on that lap, which is unfortunate, but um, we now take the lead of the Grand Prix with Ryan, Jetson, and HO making their possibly one and only stops in this Grand Prix. So now you can see the gap is like 4.6 seconds. Ryan's got his fresh tires on, and now he is uh, well and truly on the charge. Our tires, despite only doing like 10 laps, already at 50%, so... If my tyres are this bad after, you know, only a third of the way through the stint, then I can only imagine how bad Ryan's tyres are going to be for the remainder of this race. So we're coming in on lap 23 now. Ryan pretty much cut the gap down to nothing. I didn't, I didn't really want to hold him up, and I also didn't want to dip too much into this set of tyres, tyre life, given we only have a short stint uh, to finish off this race now. So uh, we'll see what happens. We rejoin on the track in position 3. So we've jumped HO essentially, and uh, now we've just got to chase down Jetson to get back P2. And essentially, if we finish P2, then we haven't really lost anything essentially. So um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, just pushing on like I was. I felt like for the most of the, most of this race, I wasn't able to burn fuel. I felt like it was faster to run in lean revs through, especially the third sector where wheel spin was a massive, massive, massive issue with uh, no assist. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until this final step where I was using a lot of rich revs and standard revs to 
push the car because at, at this point, this is when I felt the most confident. So um, we're, we're using that pace to good effect now to try and chase down Jetson. I think the gap was like five, six, seven, eight seconds. And uh, now we're really starting to bang in those fastest laps. Got held up behind Ruthnik Bird there. Uh, lost about uh, eight tenths there, uh, seven tenths. So not ideal, uh, you know, it happens, but um, just got to make sure we cut through the traffic uh, efficiently. We get a corner cutting warning there. That's our second of the race as well, so we can't afford to make any more corner cuts. Otherwise, that is a three second time penalty, and that could well cost us P2 if uh, Jetson finishes within three seconds of us. I don't believe he's got a penalty, nor too does Ryan, so uh, we've got to keep it clean from here on in. So lap 30 now, this, uh, this Grand Prix has gone through pretty quickly. Um, nothing has really happened in between a lot of the stints. It's just been me pushing like crazy, just trying to uh, make up the gaps of this strategy, which I don't think is going to work out today um, in trying to catch uh, Ryan. But Jetson has a really bad run through turn one, nine. We go up the inside into turn 10. And right here, I was actually more worried about avoiding a corner cutting penalty because like I said, I was on two warnings and three second time penalty it would have been game over for the Mercedes 1-2, which is something we actually haven't done yet this season. I don't believe, so hopefully we can secure that today. We get a nice run out of the final corner up against Jetson, but with our 411 wings, I think we were just running too much downforce today. You can see Jetson just stretches away on the straight and we, we're just not close enough into the braking zone to have a go there, so um, we'll have to get this done maybe even in the middle sector. So we're following through in turn three, he's getting a little bit taily, a bit of understeer, tyres are starting to go off and uh, this is our chance. Around the outside, heading into turn four, uh, we get the move done, Jetson comes back at us and there's a bit of contact and we have spun out. So uh, that is definitely our chance of winning the Grand Prix over now. I'll bring up a replay as well to show what happened between myself and Jetson. Um, we come around a couple of corners later and Jetson is actually going to let me through, which, um, you know, fair play to him. I did rage a little bit in the party at the time and, um, you know, initial reaction is I actually thought he, he ran wide and came into my line and, and kind of hit me, but as you'll see from this replay, we'll slow it down and um, the the replay actually paints a different story altogether. So Jetson is up our inside, there's actually a little bit of a gap between the two of our cars and um, I believe I've just been lag bubbled. Um, Something I haven't said since like F1 2012. I didn't know that was a thing, but um, you'll see this is the moment of contact right here. You can see there's a gap between our cars, our, our wheels, but yet there is there is contact made on my screen, and I go round. So in fact, it's it's not Jetson's fault at all. Um, so what, what can I say? Just a weird issue. From the same country, we're from the same. We, we live in the same city, essentially, and uh, yet there's there's lag moments like that. But um, I, I don't know if it would have affected our results anyway. I, I believe we might have been able to catch up to Jetson and overtake him anyway. But um, you know, still fair play to Jetson um, for being very sportsmanlike there. Um, yeah, really appreciate that. But Ryan wins the Grand Prix. We come home in second, um, pretty much where we were the entire Grand Prix. I tried something different with the strategy, doing the two stop. Um, there, there could have been a chance where if the conditions changed, went either going definitely to full wet or going dry, um, if there was like a five, maybe I could have stretched it and, and maybe seen if I could go straight onto the next tire and that might have been an opportunity to win the Grand Prix that way or otherwise it would have been a chance for us to win if Ryan would have got a puncture or really um, had his tires go off the cliff there. but. Uh, we lost a lot of time in traffic. I, I don't think I was fast enough anyway today to, to make up the gap anyway. And so um, that was the result. So full congrats to Ryan. It is a Mercedes 1-2. Um, awesome, awesome day for Mercedes. Um, commiserations to Warden and Jared and, and Master Berserk as well. Um, three guys who were massively quick around this racetrack but didn't quite um, show what they were capable of today. Greek Master making his return to league racing today, P16. Not a good day for him. He'll bounce back next week, I'm sure. And um, we'll see uh, what comes of that. But in terms of the driver's standings, um, Ryan leads by a hefty 42 points in this driver's championship. That is quite a formidable lead to have already just uh, five rounds into the championship. We're still sitting in P4. We've had some unlucky races up until this point. Second, I believe, is our equal best result um, with Baku. 
So um, we've made some pretty big gains on, on Warden and also on Master Berserk, but you know, ultimately we need to start winning some races now in order to make up the difference that we've kind of given away in the opening few races of the championship. But guys, that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Constructors-wise, we're looking pretty good, leading by 36 points for Mercedes. Um, Ferrari will bounce back, and hopefully we can bounce back as well and get our first race win of the season in the next round of the championship at the British Grand Prix. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2017 content. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you next time.